order uh, this hearing of the Minnesota Senate Tax Committee on Thursday, March 16th. First order of business is to adopt the minutes um, from uh, March 15th. Um, the minutes are in your packets. Uh, <clears throat> are there any corrections? Seeing none, the uh, amendments are approved as um, presented. <clears throat> um, yesterday, members, we uh, neglected to uh, make a statement about the two bills that were before us, so I'm going to do that this morning. Senate File 1004 is laid over for uh, inclusion in the omnibus bill, Senate File 1340, um, similarly is laid over for consideration in the um, omnibus bill. This morning we have Senate File 1466, Senator Morrison. Good morning. Um, welcome Good. to the committee. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members, thank you for hearing Senate File 1466, which is a bill to provide a sales tax, ex sales tax exemption for construction materials for public projects in the city of Wyzetta. The projects are delineated in the bill language. And Madam Chair, I do have the mayor of Wyzetta and the community development director, as well as the Wyzetta city manager, is here as also to answer questions. But they have um, brief testimony to share. Um, welcome to the committee. If you'd identify yourself for the record. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Joanna Mouton, Mayor of the City of Wyzetta. Thank you, Madam Chair and Senator Morrison, for the opportunity to speak to you today. Panaway is the community's vision to restore, protect, and enhance public access to one of the most treasured assets of our community and the broader region, Lake Minnetonka. Panaway grew out of the work of the Lake Effect Initiative, which solicited input from thousands of people for nearly a decade. And it has created a lasting and meaningful public connection to Lake Minnetonka for the entire region to enjoy. Our relatively small community of 4,400 residents has been envisioning safe, year-round access to the lakefront for many decades. The state's support of this transformational project is very important to us. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, Senator Morrison, and committee members for your time today. I'm joined today by Director Emily Gellner, who has prepared a brief description of the city's request. Welcome to the committee, if you'd identify yourself. Thank you, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Emily Gellner. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Wyzetta. The city is requesting a sales tax exemption for materials and supplies for all phases of Panaway and Wyzetta Bay. The materials and supplies for all phases total $16.6 .6 million. The city has funded and completed phase one of Panaway in 2020 by reconstructing Lake Street and replacing a lakeside parking lot with a beautiful public plaza. It has been incredibly successful. We are hopeful that construction will commence on phase two this year, which includes approximately 1,500 linear feet of boardwalk spanning along the lakeshore in downtown Wyzetta near new community docks open to the public. The final phase, phase three, includes accessibility improvements and new public restrooms at the park surrounding the historic train depot and charter boat docks, both of which attract visitors from throughout the region. It includes restoration of the old railroad foreman's house, which will transform the house into a learning center. The house will be surrounded by a new eco park, showcasing lake habitat restoration techniques and STEM learning programs. We're proud to have two structures within this project on the National Register of Historic Places. Given the small size of the city compared to the significant regional draw of this project, the city is requesting that all phases of the project be exempt from sales tax on materials and supplies. So in closing, Chair and members, this funding would create access to Lake Minnetonka for all Minnesotans to enjoy. You won't have to live on the lake to enjoy the lake. I believe you have a one-page summary of our request, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. City Manager Jeff Dahl is here as well. Thank you, Madam Chair, Senator Morrison, and committee members for your time today. Uh, thank you very much. Um, 
Um, Ms. Pollock, I note in the um, uh, revenue estimate, I know, not there, where is it? Where it, it says various projects, but <clears throat> um, it uses the phrase lo local jurisdictions, um, but aren't they all in the city of Wysetta? Well, I just saw that phrase, and it, oh yes, in the in the, <clears throat> in the um, uh, in the summary, oh, it says for construction merit materials for projects in various local jurisdictions. What, it, what does that mean, uh, Madam Chair? The the summary refers to the statute providing a sales tax exemption I for see. construction materials in various <clears throat> jurisdictions. So I this see. bill. Um, would add the um, projects in the city of Wyzetta. And thank you very much. And uh, Senator Morrison, this project has a cost of like uh, 16.6 .6 million, is that correct? Or mayor, is that correct? Yes. Um, that is correct. And some of the um, <clears throat> elements of it have already been constructed. Is that why you're asking for uh, Senator Morrison for retroactivity? Madam Chair, members of the correct. committee, that is correct. Um, we have, <clears throat> pardon me, approximately a third um, of the financial impact is based on previous construction activities that we can, uh, which is termed phase one of our project. So when it says that <clears throat> it's anticipated that the project will start in spring of 2023, um, some of it's already started. Phase one it has been started and completed. Uh, we're looking um, to implement future phases. So go this back, would... but you're also looking to claw back the uh, <clears throat> the refund from uh, when would it have been twenty? I'll have to look at the uh, twenty twenty March thirty first. Is that correct, Madam Chair? That's correct. That's, <clears throat> that's not unusual, Senator Morrison. Um, are there any questions or comments for Senator Morrison or her testifiers? Seeing none, Senator Morrison, um, uh, thank you for bringing the bill today. And um, Senate File 1466 will be laid over for inclusion in the... In the uh, um, thank you for your bill. consideration, Madam Chair and members. Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> I will point out to members as we take up the next one, and we're looking at um, uh, a number of sales tax um, exemptions for local government projects. There are um, three approaches that um, have been suggested in dealing with granting uh, tax relief for um, local projects from uh, uh, from the sales tax, which, as you know, we with uh, local governments are exempt, um, but the way in which that exemption is administered, uh, <clears throat> uh, when the uh, projects are done by contractors, is to have the city. Uh, a pay for a uh, uh, our, our request a refund. Um, this year, we're trying to look at expanding um, consideration, and we're looking at three different ways of, of doing it that have been suggested in various bills. Um, the governor's uh, proposal um, is um, retroactive, just like we saw this uh, Senator Morrison's bill. And, uh, and is good for two years. So there's a huge cost in the first year because it goes back again and claws back from projects from earlier years and then is um, available for any project that um, going forward, but just for one year. Um, Senator May Quaid's bill uh, is not retroactive, but it is um, ongoing. So it's a cost, I believe, 
some 35, Mr. Mon, 35 million? What is it? What's the cost? Ongoing. Uh, Madam Chair, it's uh, 36 and a half million in the first year, uh, but that's only uh, no, half a year, and then it, uh, it's in the upper 70s to 80 million a year range. So it, um, so her proposal has a tail to it, but it, um, I, the obligations going forward, but it, it um, represents uh, kind of you know certainty for for um, cities that are um, planning and undertaking these projects. <clears throat> and then the third one, the third way is what we're dealing with uh, today, and that is. And this is how we've done it before. Um, individual cities or jurisdictions come forward with a bill just for their project. And uh, generally, it's a one-year cost, just like Senator Morrison's bill was. And <clears throat> it is, uh, so we're, we're considering which way is the best way to um, approach this, uh, granting this this uh, exemption, and I just want members to be aware of it, and I certainly would welcome uh, your advice on which way is the best way to go about it this year. Um, <clears throat> ongoing, two years, retroactive, or city by city by city. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, Senator... Uh, Forensworth. Uh, Senate file 2686, Tasca County. Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, committee, for the opportunity to discuss Senate file 2686 uh, for Itasca County. I, uh, the Itasca County Jail was mandated by the Department of Corrections to be replaced or closed. Um, the county has met the obligation and the new jail is currently being construction, constructed and scheduled to be completed in the fourth quarter of 2024. Additionally, the courtrooms of the old courthouse to which the jail is attached are being remodeled, remodeled and upgraded, including uh, security measures. Itasca County is asking the legislature to uh, pass Senate file 2686 to allow a rebate of sales taxes uh, for the construction materials. Uh, there should be in your packet a fiscal chart pertaining to this request. And with your permission, uh, Madam Chair, I have Itasca County Commissioner or Ad Administrator Brett Skiles, uh, I believe via Zoom. Um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Senator. Uh, welcome to the committee. Um, Mr. Skiles, we you identify yourself for the record. We're pleased to hear your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Brett Skiles. I am the Tassel County Administrator. And thank you for your time today. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to present by Zoom. We woke up to freezing mist and a thin sheet of ice uh, to be followed by some many inches of snow coming along. So I'm glad to be uh, here via Zoom with you today. Uh, as Senator Farnsworth noted, uh, after we received our Department of Corrections sunset letter, uh, the county board embarked on a long uh, information gathering uh, session and time frame what to build, where to build. And during that during that information gathering uh, period, the courts certainly took their opportunity to let the board know of security and ADA deficiencies in our current, current court system and court, courtrooms. Um, so the board decided at that time to uh, rip the bandaid off and address all the issues at once. Uh, so we are building along with our new justice center, I mean, a uh, new jail, a new justice center, which includes new courtrooms, remodeled courtrooms, addressing all of our security and ADA concerns and, and pleased to report that the courts and the judges are, are very happy with what the county is, is uh, constructing. Uh, in your package, you have a uh, kind of a fiscal note as Senator Farnsworth noted. Uh, the first column is just all the companies. I wanted to provide plenty of detail for the committee to look at, uh, all the companies that were the successful bidders. Uh, the next column includes the sales tax and in, in, the, in the bids. And the next, the last column is the jail only portion. So as you may know, uh, jails are already exempted from sales tax, so we can claim that rebate uh, for jails. But as, as, Senator, uh, as the Senator noted, the Chair no noted, uh, it's difficult to split out the other costs when bidding. So there already is legislative 
legislation legislation that approves sales tax exemptions, but it's very difficult. And so that's why there's some new language being proposed to separate out those bids. Uh, so the difference between the jail portion sales tax and the total sales tax is what we're requesting from this committee, uh, approximately $466,000 in sales tax. Um, just to go over this fiscal note real quick, uh, the pieces in red are all jail, uh, so they're not part of the request. So Hunt Electric, the NOAA detention is the actual jail cells, and there's some other things here. There's a couple items in blue that are not jail at all, so they are, you know, not in, in, totally in this request. But our request is uh, approximately four hundred sixty-six thousand dollars for sales tax exemption for the non-jail portions of our construction zone justice. So, um, uh, on the on the revenue estimate, uh, why is it ongoing for three years? Uh, it's just a very large project. The total project is is seventy five million in scope. Uh, there was some uh, demolition that had to take place. We purchased a few properties right next to our current courthouse facility, uh, so it was nearly seven months just for demolition. Uh, and then it, again, it's just a very large project. Um, it's almost two hundred thousand square feet in total. Uh, so it's just taken a great deal of time. It, it did start in. Um, June of 2021 and then expected our jail and courts should open uh, January of 2024, uh, but the rest of the remodel uh, is not gonna be completed until the end of 2024. And the cost of the materials um, is 6.8 million, is that correct then? Approximately, yes. Yep. Are there questions um, or comments for, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Skiles or, or Senator Farnsworth? Anyone? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Senator Farnsworth and Senate File 2686 will be laid over. Thank you, Madam Chair. You bet. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I neglected to say that actually there's a fourth way um, of looking at the sales tax uh, proposals, um, and that is um, uh, use one of the ongoing ones, either make way the governor or the governor, uh, and listing all the projects separately. That's been done um, before um, so that if something comes up and we can't do an ongoing um, sales tax exemption, re actually it's just a refund program that um, we nevertheless do not neglect those uh, individual bills that we um, uh, just need to uh, okay. So we'll probably <clears throat> follow that same pattern uh, this session as well. Next, we have Senator Murphy, uh, Senate File uh, 1815. Um, um, for the city of St. Paul. Welcome to the committee. If you would um, uh, begin your testimony and presentation of of your bill. This is this is not a sales tax exemption um, provision, um, but it certainly does deal with um, needs of the uh, city of St. Paul. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, thank you for making time in your agenda uh, for this proposal from the city of St. Paul. I'm happy to be the author. Uh, Madam Chair and members, uh, Senate File 1815 is a bill that would extend the City of St. Paul's ability to issue bonds for citywide capital improvement needs. Uh, this is a authority they already have in place. We'd like to extend it uh, and raise it in order to invest in the City of St. Paul. Uh, John McCarthy, who is the Finance Director for the City of St. Paul, is here to testify in support of the bill, and he will provide more on the ground information for you. Thank you. Welcome to the committee. Um, if you'd identify yourself, we would be pleased to have your testimony. Uh, good morning, Chair Russ, committee members. I'm John McCarthy. I'm the finance director for the city of St. Paul here this morning to testify in support of Senate File 1815. Um, in 1971, the city of St. Paul was given the authority to issue capital improvement bonds or CIB bonds. Uh, that authority is set to expire in 2024. So Senate File 1815 would extend that authority out to 2035. 
Uh, it would also increase the cap that we're allowed to borrow annually from $20 million a year to $30 million a year. Um, since the law was enacted in 1971, it's been amended several times to extend the term and also to increase that cap. The cap was last increased to $20 million back in 2002, and it's been flat since then. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of how we use uh, CIB bonds in St. Paul, it's the main tool that we use to finance improvements to city facilities, everything from rec centers, libraries, uh, police and fire stations, neighborhood playgrounds, and parks and trails. Uh, we've used them for uh, amenities that benefit the whole region, like the visitor center at Como Zoo, and uh, key neighborhood investments like the Frogtown Community Center, and are currently using CIB bonds to build out the new parks uh, on the Highland Bridge development. Um, so in short, it's been a very important tool to build and maintain uh, facilities for the city of St. Paul. I'd like to thank uh, Senator Murphy for carrying this bill on behalf of the city, and uh, thank you, committee members, for allowing me to testify in support of this this morning. And <clears throat> with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Yeah, thank you, um, Mr. McCarthy. Um, uh, Mr. Sylvia, um, a proposal like this um, it goes into what otherwise would be a public finance article in the tax bill. Is that correct? Or would it be a miscellaneous provision? How would it be characterized? Madam Chair, members, this, this would be something that would typically appear in the public finance article. The public finance article. Okay, other questions? Um, Sarah Nelson. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, my question, too, is just a little bit about um, how, how often this happens. I don't quite remember uh, such a um, such a bill before, uh, coming before the tax committee, um, asking to have uh, their authority to issue bonds extended. And so maybe Mr. Sylvia or someone has a little bit of history on that, and then uh, another, then I'll have a question for uh, Senator Murphy. Well, Senator Nelson, we can uh, ask Senator, Mr. Sylvia as well, but I think actually it's, it's not that uncommon at all at, at, at a certain point where, um, and this is, uh, this is the first increase in that authority in 20 years, so a, I don't see that that's um, uh, particularly alarming or anything, I guess. But Mr. Sylvia? Madam Chair and members, uh, I, I, I think it is, is common, uh, certainly when, when specific cities were given uh, statutory authority to, to levy, as did the City of St. Paul in, in 1971. Um, I'll, I'll note on the bill language itself, lines 1.6 to, to 1.10 show how many times, you know, over the years this particular authorization has been amended. Um, you know, as the testimony indicated, 2002 was the last time the, the principal amount uh, was increased, but I, I don't know that it's it's all that um, uncommon for you know a, a particular authorization like this to to be amended over the years, certainly to increase the amount or at least to increase the the duration of the authorization. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Senator. Yeah. Senator Nelson, go ahead. Thank you, uh, and, and thanks for the, the history on that. I, I just didn't quite remember that piece in the, uh, in the public finance part. But my question for um, Sen Senator Murphy, um, it, is, the, is it common, I should ask then, uh, that if the, um, if the current legislation expires in 2024, um, I assume that uh, it's important that it pass this year, just for continuity. And then um, I assume that uh, 12 years is common. Typically, I'm thinking 10 years, 20 years when we're talking about bonding. But, um, and maybe if that's not a question for you, maybe for our uh, bond, uh, city bond historian, uh, Mr. Sylvia. Uh, Madam um, Chair. Senator and, Murphy. Uh, <laughs> Senator Nelson, uh, to your first question, yes, I think it's important that we do it. Uh, in this budget cycle, uh, in part so the city of St. Paul has uh, the certainty that they, they have this decision and they can use this tool going forward. I, like you, uh, have not been here uh, for the duration of uh, the, since 1971. I have not been in the legislature since 1971. Uh, so don't know the, the history and the increments, but it appears to me that it is every 10 or so years that has been extended. Uh, and uh, I think that's the pattern, and uh, if you have anything more to add, I'd be grateful. Uh, Mr. McCarthy? 
Madam Chair, uh, committee members, um, I, th I think that's exactly right. Uh, Senator Murphy, also just having the, the kind of um, uh, certainty because we do multi-year capital planning to know that this tool exists out into beyond 2024 helps us to plan our five-year capital plan. And if we um, don't have that certainty, it makes it much harder to um, you know, plan for those multi-year projects, some of which take two to three years to build for large facilities. Thank you. Well, um, Mr. McCarthy or Senator um, Murphy, just curious, what what typically <coughs> uh, kinds of projects, uh, capital improvement projects, are um, um, supported, funded by this authority? Uh, Madam Chair, we, we have used them for mostly neighborhood uh, improvements. So we've done some kind of larger uh, regional amenities, mostly at the Como Zoo in Como campus facility, but largely these are neighborhood rec centers, playgrounds, parks and trails, uh, some street improvements, um, but mostly those kind of community facilities. Um, thank you. I, I have another question. I'll come to you in a second. Um, uh, Mr. Sylvia, I... Wasn't there a time when um, we had pro a proposal that, and I thought it was something like dealing with capital improvement bonds um, uh, for counties that, um, and I, don't know, I don't know the name of it, where it used to be they had to come and ask individually, for, like this one does, for an increase, and then we made it... Um, it was a, pub, a big public finance issue, and we made it then um, <clears throat> uh, automatic if, with, with certain restrictions, or am I thinking of some other instrument? Uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, so, so cities and counties you know, already have authorization under general law to, to issue capital improvement bonds. Um, you know, some, some bonds are, are um, you know, they, they relate to specific purposes and the requirements of which are different. Some um, require a vote of, of the voters. Some require a reverse referendum. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the general um, cap of, of, in this case, a city of the first class can issue debt greater than 2% of its estimated you know, market value. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, in 1971, the legislature granted you know, the city of St. Paul this specific authority. But I don't believe that there's anything that would prevent the city from from authorizing bonds under its general, you know, Chapter okay. 475 authorization that would apply to all cities, you know, yep. knowing that, that that cap would still apply. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, Senator Weber. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a quick question for the author or testifier. Uh, as it relates, and I recognize it's the city's, um, uh, they're certainly allowed to do this, but has there been any uh, estimate as to the effect on local property taxes with that type of an increase in the bonds issue? Mr. McCarthy or Senator Murphy? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, committee members, um, the, the bill uh, language in front of you would increase that cap. We don't have any specific plans to increase the, what we borrow annually at this time. Uh, I've been with the city for over 15 years, and we've always borrowed $11 million per year of CIB bonds. Um, and so it kind of holds that uh, impact on property taxes stable for our residents. Um, we're asking to increase that cap now to allow for potential flexibility. We've seen, obviously, in the uh, last few years, uh, fluctuating interest rates, construction costs going up and down. Uh, we want that flexibility to say one year we may borrow more than our typical uh, 11 million dollars to capture those interest rate savings and then borrow less in a future year. Um, so it's really to allow that flexibility but we are very mindful of the impact that um, you know additional borrowing would have on uh, taxpayers in St. Paul and, and intend to to keep that uh, level and, and stable for our taxpayers. Thank you. Senator Drippel. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I think your question to Mr. Sylvia answered most of my question. Um, it just seems odd to me that we even have this matter before us, given that uh, St. Paul is a city of the first class, a home rule charter city. Um, 30 million A doesn't seem like mm -hmm. a lot. B seems like we hold them on a pretty short leash when we're uh, only allowing them, limiting them to 30 million and only allowing them you know, 10-year extensions, you know, I'm not sure what business and interest it is of the state, but sounds like there's other kinds of, of um, 
debt financing that occurs at the city of St. Paul, and this is something different. I don't completely understand what this is, mm -hmm. but I probably need to go to home rule charter school. Uh, and maybe that's a conversation <laughs> for state and local government. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Dimon, I, I really don't think it has anything to do with um, whether they're a chartered city or uh, necessarily. Um, um, but um, uh, the issues of public, fan, of public finance for local governments in terms of general authority do come to the um, do come to the tax committee for review, and that's what that's why that this uh, <clears throat> Senator Murphy's bill is is before us, and um, uh, in uh, authority of this kind, they do not have um, independent authority. They need they need to come to the legislature. That's that's precisely my my question. I, I'm not sure why exactly um, why we don't just set forth um, standards and parameters and guidelines and then you know we invest a lot of power and authority in home rule charter cities for for a reason um, set you know they're of course creatures of state law um, but then they also have their own governing entity that is accountable by direct election so just just questions I have I can take my own time and understand them sure. better thanks Senator Murphy, were you here 50 years ago? <laughs> Do you know why this happened? I suppose not. I was not, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments for Senator Murphy or Mr. McCarthy? Seeing none, thank you very much, Senator Murphy. And um, Senate file 1815 will be laid over for inclusion in the uh, tax bill. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for not quizzing me on presidential trivia. I appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> next, we have um, Senator Johnson. Is he here? Um, Senate file 2736, Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Thank you, members. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to present Senate File 2736 today. Senate File 2736 would allow Red Lake County District School District to have a sales tax exemption for materials, supplies, and equipment used for construction of a new school uh, between December 31st, 2020 and January 1st, 2026 for those related costs in there. The bond was issued uh, and passed by the voters for the new school district and the request for the refund of the sales tax on those construction costs. I have here with me uh, virtually today Superintendent Jim Guter, uh, who will testify in regards to the bill, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> thank you, um, Senator Johnson. And this, this too, is, um, has a retroactive um, effective date. Just want to draw members' attention, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to that and um, the effective date lines 1.18 and 19, so it's um, retroactive to January 1st of 2020 and then applies to sales uh, and purchases from December 31st to, I would imagine it's an expected end date um, for the project for the school. Right. Um, and, during and the year Chair, 2025, is that right? I apologize, here. I'm looking at the bill, and it's January 1st, 2021, uh, on the effective date. The retroactive is what I'm seeing. No, I, um, uh, I was talking, yes, the retroactive date is that, but it's purchases made oh, certainly. Um, after. It's just, We use two different ways to apply to the same date. Uh, so it's... Um, it applies retroactively, it's January 1st, but for purchases made like on January 1st and, and in sure. the future, and then until January 1st, um, 2026. And there is a um, uh, revenue estimate in members' um, packets, and we are pleased to have your testifier. Um, Let's see, Mr. Guter. 
if you'd identify yourself, please, for the record. Uh, Good morning, Madam Chair and Tax Committee. I'm Jim Getter, Superintendent of Red Lake County Central School District. Red Lake County Central School District was created in 2013 as a consolidated school district to former Oakley and Plummer School Districts. We are a rural school district in Northwest Minnesota with great community support. From October 2020 to December of 21, we developed the construction plan with a lot of community input. On February 8th of 2022, we passed the referendum election for $14.1 million with 61% support. From December or April to December of 22, we developed and designed and did bid specifications. However, our bids came in 34% over budget or $3.6 million over budget. We had to reject all bids. Now we are finalizing details for rebidding coming up next week till April 13th and are hopeful we will get acceptable pricing. The start date has now been moved to the fall of 2023, the earliest and best case scenario for us. The proposed sales tax exemption refund would provide our construction project with approximately $490,000. And that's on the high bid that we just received. So most likely less than that. To help meet the building project, our local voters supported when they approved the building referendum. The project is very important to the communities and school district as the last new construction in the district was 45 years ago. This project provides for the future, yes, buildings, but more than just bricks and mortar. It also shows that the, shows the communities, schools, families, and students are worth investing in because they will be here in the future. The sales tax exemption for Red Lake County Central would help us be able to fulfill the promises our school board members made in presenting these local construction projects and improvements to our communities, asking for their support in the building referendum election. The students, parents, and communities are now anxiously awaiting to see the facility improvements they voted to support, the educational facilities that will provide for this generation and the next. New science and STEM classrooms and labs gym and locker rooms, restrooms, replacing an old 85 year old building, better energy efficiencies, improved safety and technology, and enough space for 40 plus students earning 800 college credits online, leading to half of our senior class graduating, graduating with their AA degrees, while we still focus on relationships and responsibility. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak today with you and for allowing the Zoom presentation. It saves me over 10 hours in the car on not very good roads right now. <laughs> sure. You know, um, uh, Mr. Uter, that's uh, <clears throat> um, one of the positive um, um, benefits or lessons that we gained through our experiences through the pandemic of being able to accommodate um, Zoom technology and, re and remote uh, technology and have the full participation um, of uh, everyone from all over the state without having to make a, a, um, a trip to the city, although we certainly welcome visitors uh, to, uh, to St. Paul in the metro area, but um, it's, a real, uh, it's a real benefit to all of us. So thank you very much. Any questions for Senator uh, Johnson or, or Mr. Uh, Huter? Uh, Senator Nelson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, not a question, just a commendation. Um, to graduate half of the seniors with a AA degree, this is the tax committee, but I'm just saying this is worthy of uh, acclamation by all. That's a, that's a terrific, a terrific accomplishment. I just couldn't let it go by without noting that. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Thank you very much, uh, Senator Johnson and Senate File 2736 is laid over for inclusion in the tax bill. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Buter. Uh, Senator Dames. Senator Dames, you keep coming back. I think this is a well, I your third or fourth appearance before well, the committee. I appreciate your committee. invitation. Thank you. Yeah, well, welcome back. Senator James brings us Senate File 2530. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and members, for hearing Senate File number 2530. 
2530 is a bill that uh, deals with sales tax on constructions. And uh, we have construction going on, or we'll have at the Red Rock Central School District and also at the Springfield School District. And Madam Chair, today I have Todd Lee, the superintendent of the Red Rock District, and Mr. Keith Kotke, the superintendent of the Springfield District. And if it's uh, with your permission, uh, Senator, Madam Chair, I'll turn it over to the testifiers. Uh, <clears throat> certainly. Mr. Mr. Lee, would you like to um, explain the... Um, uh, the bill to us, yep. what you're uh, asking for, and what the impact is. Thank you, Madam Chair. And if you're thinking, does that guy look at all familiar? Uh, 21 years ago, I spent a summer campaigning uh, in your one of your house districts. So uh, really? with, with Mark Thompson, I don't know if you remember that. Okay, so. then you're especially welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, but, but I'm not me. sure you didn't say what candidate. So I don't. I don't <laughs> <laughs> we can be a little bit neutral. Here. We spent a lot of time together. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes. Uh, thank you again, uh, committee, for having me and. Uh, our district passed a referendum in 2021, and, and much like a neighboring district, uh, Springfield as well. And unfortunately, that was sort of the, the peak of the, the worst possible timing as far as the inflation went. Our estimates were pre-inflation really taking off, and then, of course, our bids came in uh, post. So in my district in particular, uh, we were kind of forced, our bids came in even 30% higher than our, uh, even our revised estimates. And you know, after we've done a number of uh, budget cuts and uh, value engineering, we're still about 11% over budget. So uh, much like the prior, uh, prior testifier you heard, we are asking for that sales tax exemption um, for my district in particular. It would be right around $1.1 um, million. So, um, and, um, yeah. Sir, do you think that the, um, the, the cost of the project is now relatively stable and the cost of materials is not going to um, increase more, or, um, uh, or what? It, yeah, there's, how far is this project? Has building already been built? So we're going to break ground next month. Break, for, okay. <laughs> so yeah. So if, um, your if, estimate of the cost of the materials relative to the sales tax refund is still tentative, or is it locked in? Somewhat tentative. That's about it. That's a forty percent. Uh, estimates kind of based on um, everything so a little bit depends on what we complete I, it would raise it would go no higher than even like a 60 percent estimate would be 1.5 million I see okay um, any questions for mr. Lee then um, we'll hear from uh, mr. Kotke madam chair and members of uh, the committee thank you for the opportunity to present uh, similarly, actually, we're a little bit different because uh, we did do the value engineering and went out and we've received bids, but we had to put items that are on our to-do list that we had in our uh, referendum campaign and uh, literature with our review and comment for MDE uh, that we wanted delivered, but we just couldn't because we had to make choices and decisions. And I think... You know, some things that, you know, when you're working with local school districts and school boards, there's a very specific procedure we follow uh, to get even a, a, a something in front of the voters. And we have to go through a process of doing a, a site study and doing a best case or uh, a, a, an analysis of what projects uh, we think would benefit the school. And we have to go through a pretty specific review and comment uh, and get approval and blessing from the MDE. So it's not like we can turn these projects around in real time. I mean, it's about a year at least when you go through a best guess estimate uh, and then you try to go or you do go to MDE with your proposal, they have to give you a thumbs up uh, to go to the taxpayers. And if they don't give you a thumbs up, you have to get 60% of the taxpayers to approve it. So it, it's not like we can just turn these things around in real time. And so we have really been caught, I think school districts in the 2021, 2022 uh, uh, era really uh, hit that inflation uh, much higher. I think we're at 25% uh, over what we were hoping for. And so we're looking for a sales tax exemption just to help us get to the other items 
on our to-do list, which would be renovating a, one of our locker rooms so it's ADA compliant. If you want to videotape the movie Hoosiers again, we've got the locker room for you. Uh, it, it is, it's just like that. And uh, narrow hallways, and we have kids that have more needs, and we need to have respectable spaces for that. And so those, that's one of the things that's on our to-do list and um, some work within our fine arts in our, in our band room. So thank you for the opportunity. And if you have any questions, be willing to answer. Sure. Um, um, Senator Dames, so when I look at the language of the bill, it refers only to the Red Rock Central School District. But now we're also hearing um, from um, the Springfield Public uh, schools, I don't understand the relationship. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, both of them are included in the bill. The Red Rock Central is on the first side, and then the Springfield School District is on the back page. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I should have turned it over, of course. Are there uh, <clears throat> any questions or comments for um, uh, Senator Dames? And thank you for putting them together, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> thank you. So that they're one bill. Anyone? No? Thank you, gentlemen, very much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank, you. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and members. We truly do appreciate it. Sure. Senator, uh, Senator Dames, it's our pleasure. Senate File 2530 is laid over for inclusion in the uh, Omnibus Tax Bill. Uh, Senator Kupek? We have before us uh, Senate File... 2177, um, and this is for the city of Moorhead. Welcome to the committee. If you'd present your bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Senate File 2177 uh, provide a sales tax exemption on construction materials to the city of Moorhead uh, for its library and community center projects. So we're looking to amend Minnesota Statute uh, 2022, which does exempt uh, sales tax on construction materials. So on, your, on the bill on page two, line seven, uh, we're looking for a regional library and community center in the city of Moorhead. Uh, materials, supplies, and equipment purchased after February. February 29th, 2024, and before April 1st, 2027, would be exempted from uh, sales tax on those materials. The Library Community Center uh, is a centerpiece of our new uh, redevelopment downtown. The result of the development will be a more walkable, livable, and vibrant downtown that will make Moorhead uh, an even better place to live than it is right now. Uh, providing the sales tax exemption on construction materials in this bill is one small piece of helping the city deal with cost pressures related to construction inflation uh, since the project uh, went to a local option sales tax uh, before. Uh, with me today, uh, I provide additional information. I have Lisa Bodie. She's the Government Affairs Director for the City of Moorhead. Ms. Ms. Bodie, if you identify yourself for the record. Good morning, Chair Rest and members. My name is Lisa Bodie. I serve as a Governmental Affairs Director for the City of Moorhead. And thank you so much for hearing Senate File 2177. Uh, as uh, Senator Kupek indicated, we are building a new regional library and community center as part of a downtown redevelopment that encompasses a nine block area. This is one of the anchor projects, the public, a public anchor within our downtown. Um, well, uh, much of the the remaining space will be private development, including including housing and uh, business development, and it's it's near our riverfront, and so we're really excited about the linkages to the city of Fargo and um, being a greater presence in the FM metro area. As you can imagine, the Library and Community Center project has been deeply impacted by inflation. Since 2021, our cons consultants estimate that construction costs have escalated more than 19.7%. The bill before you would provide our community with some relief from those cost pressures and help us make this project everything that our community members are seeking when they voted for it in November. Uh, we were approved for a local option sales tax in 2021, and we're pleased to report that the sales tax was approved with a vote of nearly 65%. Um, you also may recall that Moorhead was one of a number of cities that expressed concerns to this committee last year about the impact that inflation was having on our project, 
And this sales tax exemption request is one of the ways that we're trying to address that shortfall. So, um, thank, thank you. you, Ms. Bodie. I see, um, Senator Kupak, this is um, this construction has not begun yet either. Correct? It's not going to start until next year. Right. right. About a year from from now. So, are all the plans and designs um, finished at, at this point, so that the estimate that we see on the revenue estimate, um, are they, uh, do you feel they're likely to, to be um, accurate um, going forward or, um, or, will, or will we see you again? I think we are accurate going forward, barring okay. some something crazy, I suppose, in our economy that, that throws inflation as a curveball. But I think we're I think we're in good shape right now. Okay. Are there uh, questions or comments for Senator Kupek or Ms. Bodie? Seeing none, Senate filed. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Kupek, and Senate filed uh, twenty one seventy seven is laid over for inclusion in the uh, omnibus tax bill. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Green. We have um, Senate File 2718 before us. Senator Green, if you would ex explain um, your, um, your bill, and I, I see on, on the Zoom that we have, we'll have two remote um, um, testifiers, and that you also have Mr. Simonson with you. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. Thank you for hearing Senate File 2718. Uh, 2718 would make it clear uh, that the sales tax paid on materials as part of a construction of the new Beltrami County Jail between March 31st, mm -hmm. 2024, and January 1st, 2028 would be refundable to the county. And the current law already exempts these costs for county correctional facilities from the state sales tax, but only if mandated by the state and federal law. Uh, Senate File 2718 would help lower the cost of this facility by approximately $1.9 million. And with that, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to introduce my testifiers. I have uh, Beltrami County Administrator Tom Berry and Beltrami County Sheriff Jason Riggs. Um, Mr. Berry, uh, we'll start with you, if that's all right. Uh, if you'd identify yourself for the record and uh, present your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, committee members. My name is Tom Berry. I'm the Beltrami County Administrator, and uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to testify today. Like many of the speakers before us, we're grateful that we don't have to make the trip down on a very wintry day uh, with icy roads and all. So this has been uh, this has been very well appreciated. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Senator Green for uh, carrying this bill as well. We're grateful to his leadership and support of our community. Um, this uh, Senate File 2718 bill. Uh, would essentially allow the county to recoup uh, sales taxes paid for construction and other expenses on the new Beltrami County Jail. Um, our facility was built in 1989 and has undergone a series of uh, repairs, upgrades, expansions, remodels. Um, currently, due to its design, its age, its size, our increases in population here, as well as DOC regulatory changes, uh, we have found ourselves in the, uh, in, in the need for uh, developing a new facility. And so the county board several years ago committed to a long process uh, where we have deliberately, uh, through feasibility assessments and needs assessments and community surveys, identified the, the, the path forward, and that is to construct a 242-bed facility. Um, and that facility is expected to, uh, to break ground in the spring of next year. Um, uh, or summer of next year, we hope rather. And uh, as you can imagine, these the costs associated with a project of this size, it's estimated to be about $80 million in, in total uh, construction value, uh, has sizable um, uh, impacts to our community. We are the second poorest uh, county in the state of Minnesota. We run a poverty rate of about 20%. Uh, so it's very important that we do everything we can to turn every stone and try to save our taxpayers as much money as we can. Uh, this Senate file, uh, will, uh, uh, as has been mentioned, save us potentially $1.9 million of direct uh, sales tax uh, costs, but it actually has a broader impact because that's almost doubled 
when you consider that we're going to have to finance um, those costs if we were to bear them ourselves. So the net savings really to the project is more likely to approach $4 million for the county. Uh, and there are a number of ways that we would rather reinvest that $4 million. And the sheriff's here uh, with your permission to speak on that. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, committee, Sheriff, if you'd identify yourself for the record. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Jason Riggs, and I'm the newly elected sheriff of Beltrami County. Congratulations. Uh, I want to, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I share uh, our administrator's sentiments as well. Um, I want to assure you and the committee that uh, for the last 19 years that I've worked with Beltrami County, we've done a lot with very, very little. Um, we are one of the poorest counties in the state of Minnesota, and these particular savings could be utilized towards programming in our jail as much needed. Our, our facility when it was built was not designed for programming back in those times. Uh, we would be looking at bringing in uh, cultural, faith, evidence-based you know, treatment. Uh, we've got a current uh, program that we're in the process with our health provider uh, called the Ember Program. And we're looking at uh, bringing in children of incarcerated parents and these finance savings uh, from this would be crucial in, in helping us uh, complete some of the, those programming needs. Thank you for your time and I'll stand for any questions as well. Um, thank you, Sheriff Riggs. Are there any comments or questions for uh, Sheriff Riggs um, or um, Senator, uh, Senator Green um, or Mr. Berry? Seeing none, thank you very much, Senator Green and Senate file. Uh, 2718 will be laid over for inclusion in the, um, Thank the you. science bill. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senate file uh, 2545, Senator Young, John. Good morning, Madam good morning. Chair. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members. Uh, you and uh, other members of this committee may recall um, authorizing the city of Oakdale uh, to pursue a local sales tax to fund a new public safety facility as well as a new public works facility, uh, both critically needed uh, projects for the city. Uh, the voters did approve both of those projects uh, to be funded. Uh, via a local sales tax in the November general election. Uh, while the construction materials for the public safety facility are already exempted uh, from the sales and use tax, the materials uh, purchased through the bid process uh, for the work, uh, public works facility are not. Um, Senate file 2545 would allow the city to be reimbursed for state sales and use tax paid for uh, materials purchased relative to this project uh, between August 20, uh, 31st, 2023 and January 1st, 2027. And uh, Madam Chair, I would like to turn it over to our very own Christina Volkers from the city of Oakdale. Uh, for additional testimony. Um, Ms. Volkers, welcome to the committee. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and members. My name is Chris Volker, City Administrator for the City of Oakdale. I'd like to express the full support of the City of Oakdale City Council and Administration with respect to Senate File 2545. Madam Chair, as you know very well, Oakdale is one of the few cities that did receive legislative approval for the local option sales tax in, 20, in the 2021 omnibus tax bill around the same time as the pandemic. Construction estimates used to introduce our loss bill in 2021 have been dramatically impacted by inflation over the past few years. While we appreciate and are thankful for the current use and sales tax exemption our new for our new public works facilities, Senate File 2545 would offer much needed relief as we work to find a combination of solutions to our projected increases in construction materials and construction costs for our public works facility. If Senate File 2545 were to become law, we currently estimate the cost savings to the city would be between $660,000 and $745,000. That amount would 
of savings would be the step in the right or a step, excuse me, in the right direction towards a viable solution. And we would greatly appreciate the support of the committee. I'd also note in lieu of this bill, Oakdale is in full support of Senate File 1603, which would provide a broader exemption to local governments statewide with respect to contractor purchased building materials. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. And I would stand for any questions. <clears throat> Senator Jean, you, I thought you said during your um, remarks that there was um, some costs that had previously not been exempted. Which costs will those be? Oh, uh, I mean, yes. the, the process, of course, is that the cost of those materials are exempted, but you only, um, but you uh, uh, realize that exemption through a refund process. But were you talking about something else? Um, well, the, the construction materials for the public safety facility are already exempted from sales and use tax. But the materials purchased through the bid process uh, for the public works facility are not. Well, and so, uh, Ms. Polly, I don't understand. Madam Chair, members, there uh, in current law there is already an exemption for build construction materials for correctional facilities mm -hmm. if that facility is mandated by state or federal I law. See. I um, see. I see. And so there are some that would fall under the exemption. Others that were not, the for which the facility was not mandated, would not fall under the existing exemption. And so new language would be needed. So, um, uh, so you referenced um, correctional facilities, but this is a public works facility. Madam Chair, um, uh, the, uh, the local sales tax that was authorized a couple of years ago was for the was for a public safety facility and a public works facility. Okay, I see, I see. So it, I understand now, oh. Senator Schultz. Thank you very much. Are there other questions or comments um, for Senator Zhang or his testifier? Seeing none, Senate file 2545 will be uh, laid over. We are approaching the end of our, uh, thank you very much, Senator, um, end of our, uh, Agenda, um, agenda, uh, Mr. Bergman, the schedule for Tuesday, so my members can prepare if they like. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We're getting ready for uh, next week, and um, for Tuesday, we're going to schedule Senator Klein's pass-through entity, uh, also Senator Klein's senior property tax credit, uh, Senator Putnam's beginning farmer credit, uh, Senator Westrom's June accelerated sales tax on alcohol and tobacco, and you are a co-author on that bill, so that bill can be heard no matter what. Uh, and then we have your residential trust fund modifications of yours, Madam Chair, and uh, the local election expense reimbursement account that is also in your bill. Um, and uh, Senator Weber, I think I had um, contacted you with regard to presenting Senator, for me to present yeah. Senator Westrom's Correct. bill. And in case he's still recuperating. Very good. And we're fine with that. Okay, fine. All right. Um, there being no further business, the tax committee is adjourned for today.